Okay, so we have our render cam and we're looking through it and I can see my objects turning at 360 degrees in 360 frames. And now what we're going to talk about is how to create an occlusion in wireframe render layers. Uh, let's see. Before we do that though, what I want to do is uh, make sure that everything looks good and I actually want to select my camera, which you can select up here with this little icon. And whatever camera you're looking through, which right now it's a render cam, I'm going to click S. What that's going to do is give me a keyframe. So this is going to help prevent uh, bad things from happening. So if what I mean is that I don't want things to move and I'm going to be like, oh shoot, I need to put it back to the way it was. Well, with this keyframe, I can actually just move it and it's going to snap it back. So that means that I have the liberty of moving around and then I can actually go through the animation it'll snap it back into its original place. So that's going to help me keep everything exactly where it needs to be. All right, so um, let's see. Let's talk about render layers. Uh, you guys probably know about display layers, which is over here to the bottom right. And display layer, basically, it's, uh, you know, you can hide your objects if you want to. And if you had a background, you could put in your backgrounds and stuff like that. But we are going to talk about is render layers. That's the next tab over. So make sure you're in render layers when we're talking, uh, when we're going through this. Um, right away, you're going to see that it already has a render layer, and it's called a master layer. The master layer is actually exactly what we see here. So whatever we render, this is basically what it's, we're going to get. It's the master layer. So we need to create a new one. Over here, above the master layer, there's a couple of things. We have this, um, a couple of icons. The second one, or I'm sorry, the third one, it's this little star. Click on that, and you're going to see that you have layer one. If I select layer one, suddenly everything disappears. Holy moly, what happened? Well, it's actually still in the master layer. It's very similar to Photoshop and groups and um, all sorts of other um, programs that you actually have to select these objects and actually place them in this render layer so that you can see it. So to do that, you have to go to your layer one, right click and say add selected objects. So again, you're going to select all your objects, or if you want to, you can actually select the turntable group, right click and go to add selected objects. So now my layer one is has the same thing as the master layer. You can see also here that we're looking at the render layer and then over here is layer one. We're going to rename this. This is going to be our occlusion layer. So double click on layer one and call it occlusion. So basically what we're going to do is um, tell it, okay, I would like this layer to be occlusion. We're going to right click on here and go to attributes. Again, this is uh, our first render layer. It's going to be occlusion. Right click on it and go to attributes and our attributes open up. Um, let's see, over here to the top right, you're going to see presets. When you click on presets, um, there's a bunch of uh, presets already available for, for you, available for you, excuse me. And one of them is called occlusion. Go ahead and select that. Now everything turned black and you're like, holy moly, it's, everything's black, what happened? Well, don't worry, if you go to the master layer, you're going to see that the master layer is fine. So if you ever want to render anything, um, you're going to still going to, you know, with the same Lambert, it's going to be fine. Occlusion is basically this. It's, um, it looks black. If you go to high quality, it's going to turn white. So just to remind you that there's black or white, depending on if you're looking at high quality. But that's what occlusion looks like. So when you render, you're going to see that occlusion is working. So what occlusion is, it's basically uh, Maya's way of saying like, okay, go ahead and emit some like particles or uh, beams of light or you know just uh, uh, some some information. And it's just like sunlight in the sense that anything that's two objects too close to each other, such as the table and the book, you're going to see that it's got a really dark shadow underneath it. But as it gets further and further away, you get this nice little gradient color. That's the magic of occlusion. It's actually trying to mimic uh, sunlight that basically an object close to each another object, no light can get in, so it's dark. And it gives you some really nice contact shadows. Now, there are a couple of issues. As you can see, I can't see the top of my, of my cup, so that's not good. And some areas look a little bit dark, and it's a little grainy. So I want to fix those. Now the fun thing about occlusion is that um, to fix this, you actually can go through a shader. So it's a preset and it automatically goes through these checklists, which is okay, everything 
when you tell it, okay, presets, occlusion, I'm going to put the shader on it, it's going to have a, a, uh, an ambient occlusion um, node to it. So let's open up our hypershade. So Windows, Render Editors, and Hypershade. We can actually select our occlusion and uh, manipulate it. So you're going to look through your shader and you're going to look find a surface shader. If you right click on it and go to graph network, you're going to see that you have a regular surface shader and then you have this MIB underscore AMB occlusion. This is the occlusion shader. This is the one if you double click on it you can open it up and see uh, the things that you can manipulate. One of them is the samples. So if I look at my uh, render, you're going to see that it's a little grainy. Right now it's 16. I can change that to like a 32. Now, you have to remember that when you change it to uh, 32, notice that um, my render time is 9 seconds so far. So when I render again, it's going to take a little bit longer because basically it's thinking, okay, now I have to look at 32 samples and try to get it to look better. Right? So that this one took 10 seconds. It doesn't seem like a lot. Um, but you can kind of compare, just kind of go uh, back and forth here. And you can see that there's just a little bit of a difference. Um, a lot of the times people go up to 256. It's completely up to you <laughs> how high you want to go. But you have to keep in mind that the higher the value, the longer the render layer is going to be. Right? So if you have all the time in the world, then by all means, go ahead and change the samples to 256. But if you're going to change, you know, if you have some, you know, a project that needs to be going over really fast, then you might need to keep it at 16. I prefer 256, but if, again, if you're running out of time, then it's not going to happen. You have to consider that. Notice that I did, the only thing I did was change the samples to 256, and my render now is 31. But look how nice and clear it is, right? This is really noisy, full of pixels, and this one's nice and clean, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so now that we've done the uh, samples, you can see the quality is significantly better, but our render times have increased dramatically. So what we want to do is, um, for this example anyway, I'm going to drop it back down to 16 for render sake. And the next part is trying to tackle the issue that we really can't see the shape of the cup and the table seems to be missing. So what we want to do is actually change a couple of settings in here, uh, specifically the spread and the brightness. So increasing the spread, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's actually going to spread out the occlusion. So I'm going to go ahead and crank that up to 1.2. Uh, when I do that, again, our, the, the resolution is going to be a little bit less because of the samples. I've dropped them down to 16, so it's going to be a little bit noisy but uh, at least this will be good for, um, for us to work so far for this example. Um, now you can see that it's actually gotten a little bit further, the spread. You can see that this is what it looked like before and now it's gone a little bit further, but we can still push it a little, um, a little bit more. We can't still see the top of the cup. We really want to be able to see everything. So another thing that we can change is the brightness. Right now it is going directly off to white which, uh, which, is, which is the default. If you take that slider and just bring it to the left just a little bit to make that a very light, light gray, and I render, what it's going to do is basically tell it, okay, I, every white in the occlusion is actually going to be this light gray. And now you can see our table, and you can see the top of the cup. So before, this is what it looked like, and now you can see the ends of the table at the top, top of the cup. You can push this a little further if you like and just bring it to gray a little bit more. I'm going to keep that image and render. So again, the purpose is to be able to see the shape of our geometry. Anything that goes to white isn't really going to be seen in the, you know, you're not going to see it, so what's the point? Okay, so right now it's only taking 11 seconds at 16 bits. It's a little bit noisy, but now I can see my cup, I can see the table, and if I'm happy with this, I'm going to go back, change my samples to 56, 256, and occlusion is done. Next, wireframe. So wireframe is also going to be another render layer. So let's go ahead and create it. Let's go to our render layers um, on the bottom right of our screen. Click on this little icon, the third one. Click on it. Again, everything's going to disappear. Don't worry. Double click on this and call it wireframe. Maybe with a capital, whatever you like. 
Again, there's nothing there, so we need to select our object.